Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Luke Shem. We're here with the Core Skill Tractor IBT. And I'm Ty Gordon. I'm JJ Dynamo. So here are our, we're all part of the Core Skill Tractor team. We're always looking for ways to innovate. So what we've looked at is a, an IBT. It's an infinitely variable transmission. We were basing it off a plant change setup. This is something we've worked with and seen in industry that we think is a very cool idea that we want to implement into a smaller scale that we think could help our tractor team to do better. So with a lot of this, it controls our variability. We use the ring gear on the outside, which is different from most of our, or what we've done in competition and seen in most planetaries. And we're basing it off what we saw about that Vario Drive, which is Agco's product, and we want to kind of work with them or work on their ideas. So uh, this is the picture of the vent variable drive transmission. Um, so they use hydraulics um, based off of their ring gear drive, and then it uh, goes from a, they got a pump that changes displacement, and that's how they change the speed of their ring gear to get the different uh, speed output. Um, so as you can see, here's a picture of our core scale tractor. Um, so this kind of shows where this infinitely variable transmission will go into place. Um, so we'll still have our initial belt reduction, um, but then we'll go into our IVT. Um, now we'll place the, kind of the traditional transmission that sees you, shows you where it uh, lies in the tractor. So for a lot of our project goals, so starting the fall semester, we worked with getting a small scale prototype so that we could see how it works and just like work on some of the small kinks to figure out what we want to do with it when we got to bigger or to our bigger project, and then we worked with a lot of CAD model of our gears after we worked with our small prototype, what we saw, and then we implemented that into our bigger CAD models, and then we worked to get our bigger gears cut for a prototype of a large scale. Now in the spring semester, we wanted to work so that we could have our um, whole test bed platform all either sourced or ordered or coming in so that we could have this put together. So that way we can hand it off to the quarter skill team so they could do a large amount of their testing and working with the tractor so that they could see how efficient this is going to be, how well they can benefit from using this. So some of the initial calculations for this process was we wanted to get it comparable to the performance we had seen with our manual transmission, but then add the additional options of the infinitely variable transmission. Um, so how we kind of kept the same efficiency was with the IVT, we can have a lockout point where that ring gear no longer spins and we're no longer losing power to it. Um, so we decided to have that in our pulling gear. Um, compared to our past transmissions, our first and second gear is where we saw the best pulling output. Um, so we really sourced our IVT lockout point to be that 3 to 1 ratio to get the ideal pulling ratio. So yes, we have the locked out version on the left and uh, just the instantly variable on the right. So what it does is for a typical planetary setup, there's at least one point on the gear set that's locked in place and then that's how you get a reduction. So for our lockout point, we're just going to lock out the ring gear and so then we'll get our typical 3 to 1. All the power will be going through the planetary at a 3 to 1 ratio. The infinitely variable will have the ring gear on a set of rollers and it can move freely along with the external gear that will power that. So that, for theoretic, from that we can theoretically get a 1 to 1 ratio as well all the way down to 3 to 1 ratio. And if we do that right we can actually incorporate reverse with it later on. Then earlier on last year, I'm going to keep clicking JJ, I also made a 3D printed prototype to validate this. So. I had two electric motors run the whole thing, one for the external ring gear, one for the main sun gear, and it did come out as planned. We did get the ratio we wanted. The input electric motor ran about 100 RPM. It did then dropped it down to 30, but if we ran the second electric motor, we could get it back to a one-to-one -one ratio fully on. Um, so the next part of the calculations that we did was we were curious what kind of input we had to put in that ring gear to kind of determine the efficiency at our one-to-one -one ratio. As you can see, um, we could reduce our speed by half, and the torque located on the outside of the ring is half, so we could do a quarter horsepower at the ring to what we were seeing at the input at the planetary. So now working with creating a full-scale prototype, we sourced a lot of parts. So we sourced <coughs> sun and driver gears from Motion Industries, and these were going to be metal gears that we were going to use to put on our driver on our outside ring and then as our sun gear. And then our planning and ring gears we sourced from Atlas Tractor. 
we were getting the planting gears cut out of nylon because we were working to get rid of lubrication so we could eliminate a housing in our test bed. We would work forward to use a housing later on, but just for basic testing, we wanted to make it the most simplistic thing we could. And then our outside ring gear, we were going to use out of aluminum. So it would be metal on metal here. We would probably work with the grease lubrication to minimize like friction and damage that could be caused during testing. And our nylon gears are being worked as uh, a shorter scale or yeah, shorter scale project because we're not planning on using them for longevity, but working to use them to get the quickest benefit we can for testing. <coughs> so here again, we have calculations. Um, so this kind of goes with the packaging sizing of the platform. Um, so we had to figure out what size gear we had to drive this ring. Um, so we looked at some different options um, based off of what our motor our electric motor to build the test stand ran at 3750 RPMs. Um, we wanted to reduce that down, otherwise we'd have to spin this ring gear so fast, um, we'd need a bigger gear here um, to spin that. But due to packaging sizes, we wanted to get that down to that 3.5, so we looked at using a uh, old transmission we had lying around um, to reduce that down to the 3.76 um, reduction to uh, slow down that ring so we can drop that gear size. And yeah, to add to that, for what we're going to use is we're going to use that 10, 10 horsepower electric motor rated at 37.5. And for that, when you go through the whole when you go through the whole planetary setup, we do get about 52.66 foot pounds of torque. And then at the ring on the outside, which the hydraulic motor will be turning at, will be 26.3. So the calculated power at the ring gear will be roughly around two and a half horse, which we have a motor that will be able to suit that as well as a power source. So designing the test bed and the drag train, we're working with like a 10 horsepower motor, like they said, and then a four-speed uh, four-speed transmission will be coupled to that using a coupler. And then we'll be working with a PTO disconnect at the end to connect to the dyno monitor. And then the whole bed itself is being worked with with 80-20 extruded aluminum. This is a material we found out from other projects that we've seen in our uh, department that is very easy to use, and very adjustable. We can work and like move our stuff around if we need to make adjustments for how all our components are going to fit because there's going to be some variability in coupling all these different things together. So this is probably the easiest way to get all that without having to pay somebody to fabricate what we did. And then working with our test stand safety. So for controls and shutoffs, we have a hydraulic flow valve that can give the operator full control of the hydraulic circuit so you can back it off and turn it down with an easy just switch. And then we have an electrical shutdown on our motor so you can turn the power off to the electric motor. And this will be done on a breaker at the end for the motor. And then we'll have shielding on the whole test bed or driveline components, which should be easy to mount given that 8020 gives you very easy mounting points all throughout the things. And they have components that they sell so you can make easy brackets to cover each part. So cover all the rotary parts and like our planetary is all sealed up inside this housing. So some of the requirements, um, so we had a motor on hand that was a 6.5 cubic centimeter displacement and was rated at 4,000 RPM. Um, so based off of that pinion gear we had to drive that ring, it was based off that 4,000 RPM. Um, and based off of that system and the torque requirements at the ring, um, we found that we'd need 110 PSI flowing at 6.7 gallons per minute, um, which would be controlled by that flow valve. So this is just a schematic for our test bed setup. Once we incorporate it with the tractor, it'll be a little bit more different. It'll be more of a closed loop system, which it is. But for this, we do have our pump that will be provided by an outsource of power. We have our diverter in there so we can send as much flow as we want to to the motor to provide the speed, but we can also variable, vary it with that. Also have pressure transducer and a flow meter to measure the, the horsepower that's coming from that, as well as our motor that will spin the ring gear to find that adjustable speed that we are looking for for our variable transmission. So kind of our testing plan is um, to be able to see what the output is, we're going to measure in um, the torque and rotational speed um, and the flow and the pressure. Um, so all these inputs help us to determine how much horsepower we're putting into it, and then all those would be on the output on that uh, 
um, the dynamometer um, so we can see what we're putting in and what we're putting out and that gives us kind of our overall efficiency of what this system can produce. So as we kind of conclude, so we're handing this off to the core scale team, um, but what we've been able to produce is that we've conducted the preliminary um, research into the system. So we've done the calculations to figure out the sizing of the components, um, what that looks like, um, how to incorporate it into the size for the tractor, and then um, the calculations needed to produce what horsepower the tractor output will produce, and then kind of did some preliminary stuff on efficiency to hand off to the quarter scale team to do the, the testing and develop the concept.